Hello everyone, this is Mr. Fong with week one, grade three cello lesson. This is a review of what we've gone over during this week. Ah, um, the safest place for the cello to be, on the ground, on its side. We don't, we rarely want to ha have the cello laying on its back because some surfaces will do damages to the back and we obviously don't want the cello to come down on its side over the bridge because this is the most fragile part of the bridge. So first we're going to discuss the end pin. This end pin here is what will help prop the cello higher while we're sitting down. The end pin will come out of the bottom screw here and all we have to do is unscrew this once or twice, turn once or twice lefty-loosey, and then it will start sliding in and out. Now, how far should we lengthen the end pin? Well, it depends on how high the seat is. Mr. Fung right now is on a much higher seat than normal, but for viewing purposes, I try to get as close to this computer as I can. I've been telling our students three width lengths of the hand. One, two, three, and then have the end pin right here. So looking at our cello, we're talking about from closed position, we pull it out, and we can measure one, two, three, and right about here is where I should have my end pin. But because of my seat, I know my seat's a little bit higher, I'm going to bring the end pin out a little bit more. And then righty-tighty. Be sure to tighten this hard enough because sometimes we tend to lean down on the cello and then it brings the end pin back in. All right. So this week we talk about posture, sitting posture, and plucking a few of the strings, just to begin. Now, firstly, when we sit, we want to be at the very edge of the seat, the front half of the seat, so we can almost lean forward easily. And a nice test I like to do is if we can stand up right away without having to throw our body forward and then pick ourselves up. So I'm sitting at the very edge of my seat, and you'll notice that my left hand is always in contact with the neck. I like to say that there are four places where our bodies come in contact with the cello. One, the inside of our right knee. Second, the corner inside of our left knee. Our chest bone here called the sternum will be touching the shoulder of the cello and our left hand, really our left thumb from the left hand. And I'll talk a little bit more about the posture of how to hold the proper left hand stance. All right, well, let's start with our right knee. So we want to bring the cello into the inside of the right knee, where our knee kind of juts into the side, uh, a little bit above the side of the front of the cello. Now our left knee, a little bit different. We're going to keep the left knee a little bit behind the cello, but then again, the corner of the knee will wrap this corner of the cello. So the left knee is not entirely covering the side of the cello, and it's not entirely behind the cello either. It's on this corner. Okay. Now when we look at this from a straight on angle, you'll see that the bridge goes towards our right a little bit, my right, so that it tilts it angles the cello a little bit to the side. This will help us bow so that we don't have to reach so far over if the bridge is facing that way. Okay, so I have my the inside of my right knee, the corner of the cello with the top corner of my left knee, next my sternum, my chest bone, right touching on top of the shoulder part of the cello. And this forces me to sit up and sit forward. We're almost creating a triangle here where I'm able to lean on top of the cello. And the cello is sort of leaning on me too, so I don't feel like the cello is pushing me back on my seat. And I'm not totally hunched over on my cello, but there should be a balance, a nice triangle. I don't know if you can see this triangle, but try to see a triangle. Okay. And the last place that I've been teaching our students to hold the instrument contact is with our left thumb. We're going to create a cup with our left hand, and you'll notice that when we create a cup motion, like a holding motion, our fingers are all curled. 
our fingers are all curled. We don't want any straight joints because straight joints will lead to tension and it's not going to feel very good. You're going to feel very tired soon. So we want to put the very tip of our thumb in the middle of the neck. Not at the top, not at the very bottom, but right in the middle and we're using the very tip of the thumb. The tip of the thumb. This will give us more mobility when we start using our fingers. And we're going to hover the fingers over the string, not touching it over the string. But it will look like I'm holding on to a cup and my thumb is in between the middle and the ring fingers on the other side of the neck. Okay, right in the middle of the neck. So I have my four places, inside right knee, top corner of my left knee, sort of embracing this corner of the cello, my chest bone, the sternum on the shoulder of the cello, my thumb bent and behind the neck. There's another nice test that all cellists and many beginning cellists do to see if the cello is at the right height. We want to see if our left ear is brushing up against the C peg, the bottom peg on the right side of the cello. This C peg is the peg that holds the C string. And we want to see if our left ear is brushing up against the C peg. So there's really almost, there, is, there are five places that's really touching the cello. So that's if we're doing our test right here. So sitting up and holding that position. We should be comfortable. We shouldn't feel like we're leaning too far forward or leaning too far back. Also, the cello stays on the left side of the body. The scroll will stay on the left side of our heads. And we don't want to hold it right in front of us or on the opposite side, on our left. Now a good test to see if your posture is correct, especially how your chest and your knees are bracing the cello, is we want to pretend we're about to hug someone and be able to rock the cello left and right, it's just slowly, gently. Having our chest and our knees in control of the cello. Now we hold out our arms here just in case if the cello decides to slip off of our knee, it can land into our arms without harming the cello. So our cello is touching our body in four places, our inside right knee, corner of the left knee, our sternum, and the thumb only. We want to keep the elbow off the cello. We want to keep a nice straight left hand wrist here and our fingers, fingers hovering over the strings curled here. Now let's get on to some plucking. We're going to create a backwards L or what might look like a forwards L to you. And we're going to put the thumb on the side of the fingerboard almost two-thirds the way down to the bridge. This is a soft place for us to do some plucking. Now we're going to start with the string farthest from our thumb. This is the A string. And we're going to pluck four A's with our index finger and the thumb on the side of the fingerboard to help support the hand. And we'll keep our finger and our hand and our elbow nice and high here. So I'll count you off to pluck four A's. One, two, ready, A. One, two, three, four. We're going to go to the second string, which is our D string, and pluck four D's. One, two, ready, D. One, two, three, four. We're going to go to the next string in third string, which is our G string. One, two, ready, G. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to come to our last string, the string closest to our thumb, the C string. I'll count you off. One, two, ready, C. One, two, three, four. And that's how we hold on to our instruments, and that's how we're going to do our pizzicato, as we call it, the plucking, this week. Now let's talk about bringing the end pin in as this lesson comes to a close. Normally, our students would have the cello on the ground and not on the table, but for viewing purposes, I'm doing this close to the cam as I 
possibly can. We're going to loosen the screw here by the end pin, lefty-loosey, and only one or two turns. We don't have to turn it all the way out because then the screw will come off of the hinge here. And we're going to slowly slide the end pin in. We don't want to slide it too fast because sometimes we'll create a big knocking sound, a pop in here, and it might wear the cork down here. So we're going to slide it in slowly to the end and tighten the screw up. And that concludes our lesson. When you put the cello away or set it down on its on the ground, make sure it's always on its side. All right. Thanks for watching. Happy practicing. Bye.